Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're back with some more Factorio. And what do we have for this episode, Row Type? I think it's and we're doing trains, right? That's right. And this is probably going to be a, a long bit of train information, but we're going to start with, I guess, the most basic way of setting up a simple train network. So last episode, we talked about how to lay down the rails, and I'll just lay down. Uh, let's see, looking at the map here, I think we might turn off this direction. There's also a bunch of rail on the ground. I don't know how that happened. I'm going to pick that up. Oh, but... mm. I, it could be that my inventory <laughs> was full. Oh, yeah. So here's, for example, let's just say we started with this this bit of rail because this is where we want a train to come in and offload all of its stuff. Now, the way to get it to do that is to put a train stop down. Now, I've made five of them, actually, in my pocket. But train stops are just a... It's pretty simple. just needs electronic circuit, iron plate, and steel plate. So you can actually make those on our, like, all-purpose area that we built and we've been kind of adding things to. We can just add that eventually to that area. So you make a train stop, and when you select a train stop, it will show these green boxes along the sides of any rail that's nearby, or I guess near where your mouse is. And those are locations to plop the train stop. Now, the train always pulls, like considers a forward looking train stop on the right side of the track. So I'll place one here and we can look at it. The train, as it's pulling up to this train stop will always be here going, uh, I don't know, north up going mm -hmm. this way. It will never come down and say, oh, I want to stop at this train stop. It will never come down this way. You, you know, even if there were a track here, we don't have track here now, but you know, if I'm had this and if this was connected to something else, it will never say, oh, I'm going to come in this way. And no, it's always on the right. And you can see that if you hover over the train stop, it has it puts these white boxes on the rails and the little arrows direct with the direction of the train. The white boxes are of the either wagons or the locomotives themselves, where they will be when they're stopped at the train stop. So you'll see here we have what one, two, three, four, five white boxes. So if you have, I just happen to have a locomotive here that I will place down, and I have three wagons here that I'll just connect to it. Fill it up with some fuel, which I guess this is a good time to talk about that. Similar to the car, you just open by clicking, and there are tabs here. We'll talk about the schedule tab in a minute. But if you go over to the fuel tab, you can just fill the fuel it with. I don't even have any fuel. We have wood I got somewhere it. in a box. I got it. I got yeah, it. Yeah. So now it's fueled. It doesn't have that little blinking icon. And to get it to go to this train stop, which is named after, I believe, the early purchasers of the game or the Kickstarters or something. You can rename these, but for now it's called Joachim Nilsson. He's already figured out how to do the colors. You click on it, you open up, you look at the schedule here. There's a plus button on the top. There, well, there are two plus buttons. The top plus button in the schedule tab will pull open all of your stations. And we only have the one. But if you have a ton of stations, they'll all be listed here in a little scroll window and you click it. Now, the next thing that pops up is it says add weight condition. And this is basically just your, your programming your trains. You want it to go to that station. And how long do you want it to sit there? And you have all of these different options. Time passed, meaning I want it to sit there for 60 seconds or whatever you want. Inventory full, meaning I want it to sit there until the wagons are full. It does not check the locomotives for something like fuel. It only checks the wagons but it'll sit there until all of the wagons are all full. Inventory empty, the same, just in reverse. All of the wagons are empty. Item count, you can get really specific and say, I want it to sit there until I have 200 green circuits. And you can load it up with a bunch of other stuff, but until it has 200 green circuits, it'll just sit there. Circuit condition is related to the circuit network, which we haven't talked about at all, so we'll, we'll come back to that later. And then inactivity, that's, you know, it sits there and there's no, no inserter is dealing with it. Nothing is happening to it. It's just sitting there with nothing, nothing going on for some amount of time. 
So I'm going to say time passed because that's just the simple. It looks like you already added something. But you can see you can set multiple conditions. You can also, the second plus down on the bottom will let you to add, let you add multiple conditions in the same stop. If I delete one of these here, it says wait until empty cargo inventory. And I'm going to click plus and say inactivity. And you see it automatically says and five seconds of inactivity. So that means it'll pull oh. up and it'll sit there until the cargo is empty. And it'll also make sure there's five seconds of inactivity. You can switch that to an or. And I don't know if you dragged that or not, but that's just a default that it went to. But so you, you can use kind of basic principles and or or all these different conditions, et cetera, et cetera. Now you notice it's not actually running yet. There are two ways to get it to run. You can either switch it to automatic where it's just going to be automatic. There it goes. You can also, if it's on manual, push the go to station button, which is the right pointing arrow. And if you have, we don't have multiple stations, but that way you can just select a station and kind of shortcut the normal schedule and just tell it, go right to that one. And so that's, those are the ways to get it to go to the station. Now, if I highlight the station, you'll see that the cargo wagons are neatly in their white boxes that it has predicted for us. That's useful for placing things like inserters. Even if you don't have a train, you can still see where the wagons will be. So you can, you can place the inserters and whatever else you need down. Now, this being kind of our simple first train layout, I'm going to just extend the railroad a little bit more. The simplest way to make a train network is to build a two-headed train. And you do that by taking another engine that I have right now, and when you have it over the tracks, you can push R and it'll swap. It won't rotate because it has to be on the track, but it'll swap between which direction the engine is pointing. So I could do it that way, and you can see it's pointing forward, or if I pick it up, I just hit R and attach it down, and now it's pointing down the south, like we'll call it. So the reason you might do this is because in a train can only pull in the forward direction automatically. You can reverse them manually. So if I get in here, same as with the car with tab and hold S, I'm using this locomotive I'm in to back up the train. I can do that because I'm in the train. If I weren't in the train and I were trying to run on that schedule we just talked about, it wouldn't go backwards. It only looks forward to try and automatically generate its path. So if you want to make a train go, you know, pull into this station, let's say, and then change its mind or, or finish unloading or whatever, and then go down to this station I just added down here, you would add the other station down here and with a, a train pointed that way, it will then recognize that as something it can access because it has a locomotive facing the direction it needs to go. Now you'll notice once I opened this second locomotive, it already had all of this stuff in the schedule. If you attach locomotives together in the same train, they work as one. So I can open up either of these locomotives they have the same schedule because it knows this is just one, one train. Now I'll add the second station that I just plopped down there, Callum McCann, and I'll just say time passed. Let's take this down to five seconds or so, so we can actually see it work. Flip it back onto automatic, and you can see it goes to this one. Whatever its conditions were just finished, so it's going to go down to this one. Should wait five seconds, and then come back longest five seconds of your life there we go and so that'll just keep going you know it'll follow it it's because you have these engines facing the right direction and you can hop in these and if you don't do anything you just kind of sit here and don't, don't push any buttons you can just ride the train which is sometimes useful if you're really far away and you know a train already has the schedule you just hop on it and it'll take you wherever you're going so that was weird. Did you do something? Oh, you disassembled the uh, the train stop. So let's see. What else do I want to talk about? 
I guess we should talk about the no path because that is an error that some people get and sometimes it's really confusing. So let's go ahead and see, and I'm trying to remember how to manufacture an error that people get. I think one way to do it will actually be to, whoops, oh well. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to make the uh, track straighter, but yeah. <laughs> you beat me you to like it. That little, that little wiggle. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. This should throw a no path error, after which I can explain it. So you'll see in the schedule, this Callum McCann is still there, but it's red because it doesn't actually exist, so it, it can't go there. So I'll delete it, and I will add this next one, Duke Al, and I'll tell it to go there. Now, if I remember correctly, let's see, it's going to try... Yeah, so now if you, if you look at the locomotive itself, and it can be a little hard to see, you have to be zoomed in a bit, You'll see it's it's spinning this no path. And that pretty much is just telling you it doesn't know how to get there. So this rolls in a couple of those things I, I was talking about earlier. The train stop is always on the right side of the train. So even if I, let's see, if I can make this a connected loop. Demonstration with all the squiggles in the world so mouse gets annoyed. Well, I don't and... think it's going to connect now. Oh, you're, know, you're doing not. a loop. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it. And sometimes this can be a little finicky. You have to know the turning radius, but there we go. So even though this is connected, it's going to say no path because it's trying to get to the, a part where the signal is on the right. So you can see if this were, if we were to drive around, the, the train stop would be on the left, which is, doesn't count as stopping at this station. The only way for it to get to the correct stop at this the correct orientation at this stop is to just go backwards now i mentioned you can do this manually so if i hop in and i turn this back to manual mode i can do this i can drive it backwards by holding s but this is why you can sometimes need these double-headed trains because now that we have a double-headed train turn it back onto automatic it the no path is resolved it's found its path and it can now figure itself out. So a lot of times people will be building their train networks and they'll be getting these no path errors and, and won't understand why. It can be a number of reasons, but basically what no path means is there's no way for your train to go forward according to any locomotive. So it has to be forward by, you see, so in this case it's forward by this one, and then on the way back it's forward by the other locomotive, one of the locomotives has to be moving forward to get the train to a stop with the stop on the right. And if it can't calculate a way to do that, it throws that no path error. So that is, I think, basic single uh, double-headed train networks. Any questions so far? I mean, it's a little bit confusing sometimes. No, I think I got it. Yeah. So it's... And this is generally what a lot of people do for an early, either an early game, or maybe they just care about trains that much. They just need to get them running for some purpose. So you can imagine you send it off to get a bunch of materials. You see it stops here. And then you just run a bunch of inserters. You load it up and then you can just dump these out onto belts. And here now you, you know, you can you ship it off for coal or something. It comes back, grab the coal out, and now you have coal. So this will be useful, like I said, for kind of basic, basic procedures. One thing to note, I will put it back on manual mode here for a second. You do have to be a little careful with the way you place your inserters because you can actually take fuel out of the locomotive if you're not careful. So I'll put these into a box and we don't have power. Let's see if I have power anywhere nearby. Uh, there we go. So you can see here, this inserter is actually taking fuel out of the locomotive, which I suppose if you wanted to, you, you could build something to do that. But if you misalign your inserters, you could sometimes take fuel out of the locomotive. When the locomotive runs out of fuel, it just coasts to a stop. And depending on how your rail network is set up, that can just jam everything. You know, if it, gets, if it happens to stop in the middle of a junction that your entire rail network uses, you can just block the entire network. And it doesn't really tell you 
if you if you don't have eyes on the train itself, it's hard to know that's why it stopped. So just gotta be a little careful about that. That said, that's another reason too, at a lot of stops, what I'll actually do is build kind of the reverse, put a box and an inserter putting in, and you just put fuel in the box. That way anytime your train stops at a train station, it's fueling up. So you always gotta be careful to keep your trains fueled. Okay, so the question we have then is where do we want this to end up going? Because aren't we going over to the other side of the map where the iron is? Isn't that our priority? Right. Yeah, so I think that should be our first train stop. So we actually probably don't need that left spur. I think we might build a right spur of some kind. So let's okay. see, maybe kind of out this way and over to that patch of materials way off in that direction. And will the train be able to follow that or will we, will we have to reset up the stop? So it will right now if you pick up that stop it will rename it when you when you put it down because every time you put down a stop it, you, it picks a name from their database of supporters or whatever. You can I did mention you can rename stop so i'll show you how to do that if you click on the stop itself you you get this little window and it's kind of useful they recently added this trains with this stop so it'll have we only have the one train but if we had multiple trains you would see a little kind of mini map view of each train that has this stop in its schedule mm -hmm. and if you rename it let's just click the little rename button we'll just call this depot two headed push enter now this train is, or this stop is renamed depot two headed it automatically renames it in the trains which is nice so you don't have to go refigure all that you can also place another stop down somewhere else and if you name it something that was already in a schedule it will it'll figure that out it'll say you know i don't have this name in my in my train network and then if you place it again it'll find it again you don't have to like re refresh anything it'll just it'll just keep looking for that name once it finds it great found it good to go so i was dumb here and didn't give enough space for this train i know i'm fixing it right now okay you're gonna shift everything up yeah well, that doesn't mean you're gonna have to probably reset up the <laughs> oh this was just a demo for the for the inserters but we'll worry about that for now okay so add station and I will notice I'm trying to mine the rail under the train. Obviously, that can't be done. Pretty pretty basic, but just thought I'd mention it. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, so the question I have, though, is if I rename this, will it reset... The, let's see, see if I, okay, yeah, good. Yep. Yeah, so anytime you rename something that is already programmed somewhere, it should generally fix it every, you know, everywhere it's programmed. So if we had like 12 trains set to stop at Mouse Station, and I went in and renamed it Rotype Station, all 12 trains would still go, they'd, they'd know, they would update themselves. See, row tape station is going to be the other end. See, white train goes into mouse station, <laughs> black train goes into row type station. I saw that. While we're here, before we take oh, a cue, we can deal with that later. While we're here, I'll mention one other thing. And I don't know if you have a locomotive on you or the ability to make one. I don't believe I have enough materials to, but. I we... don't have any engines, so no. Let's see. Oh, I can build a cargo wagon. That'll do the job. So I'm going to back this train out and show you how I tend to build depots. It's kind of a useful little trick. So I'll back this train. Let's just pretend this train is out loading up on copper or you know whatever. It's loading up on materials. You can shift right click on the train stop and then shift left click on another train stop, just like copy pasting the assembling machines and you'll copy paste the train stop. So now we have two train stops called mouse station. You might think, well, what does that mean? That makes no sense. You can tell a train to go to, it only has show up one schedule. 
and the train will automatically pick the one that's not full. Now, right now, they're both empty, so it's probably going to take, yeah, this one on the right because it's the shortest path. So it'll take the shortest path of the ones that it can access as long as they're not full. Now, if I put a, let's see, where do I have it? I have a cargo wagon here. If I stick a cargo wagon at the other one, and I'll back this out of the way again, get back to manual and drive it out of the way. There we go. If I tell it to go automatic, I guess I should have put it on the other one, but you'll see it'll, it'll automatically pick which one. Okay. I, I think we got the concept though. <laughs> and I think this is a good point to also wrap up the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Mouse Gunner and Rotype signing out.